determine if a given set of parentheses is valid. This is a very basic problem. But at the same time, it is very, very important because it has a lot of different applications and it is asked in a lot of different ways. The underlying concept, however, remains the same. One such sample problem is available on lead code. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, I want to quickly go over what do you actually mean by valid parentheses and then we will try to approach the problem gradually. We will take the help of a stack data structure and then arrive at an efficient solution. As usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a string that has both the opening and closing brackets of all the different types. So you have curly braces, you have the normal brackets and you have the square brackets as well. Correct? And now you have to determine which of these strings are valid. So when it comes to valid parentheses, what is the rule that you should know? The only rule that you should know is that if you are opening a certain kind of parentheses, then you have to close it as well. And you have to close all of these brackets in the same order in which you are opening them. So if you are opening the normal brackets first, then you have to close them first as well. In the second example, if you are opening the square brackets first, then you open the curly brackets first. Then first of all, you have to close the curly brackets and only then you can close the square brackets. So that is what a valid parentheses actually mean. So in this problem, let us say you have these sample test cases. For the first test case, you can see that we open a normal bracket and we close it. So I can say that for the first test case, this string is valid and I will return a true. Correct? If you look at the second test case now, I open a square bracket first and then I open a curly bracket. After that, if you check, I close my curly bracket as well. So, so far so good. Move ahead now. I open a normal parenthesis and then I close it as well. So this is also valid. And now what are you left with? You are left with one more square bracket and you close it. So this string is also valid. So once again, you return a true. For the third test case, what do you do? You open a normal bracket first. And now before you can close any other bracket, first of all, you have to close this one. But what are we doing over here? We close a square bracket first and this is not valid. So for this particular test case, you need to return false as your answer. So if you feel that the problem statement is now even clear to you, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Before you start working out a solution, you must first try to understand why these problems are important and what are its applications. For example, you might have seen these kind of equations, right? And if I ask you that, go ahead and solve it. How do you approach this? You do not just jump on it, right? You will try to analyze this string and then determine that, hey, this is an inner bracket and that is what I have to solve first. Once I solve this, then I will look at some other bracket and then I will start looking at all of these outer brackets as well. So this is why valid parentheses are very important. They tell you the order in which you have to go about solving your problem. If this string was invalid, let us say instead of this string, you had a curly braces over here, right? Then how do you solve this problem? It is not possible, right? This is not telling you anything. So that is why these problems are really important and you will find them in a lot of interviews. Basically, what you can now do is you can get rid of all of these variables and all of these operators. So ultimately, your equation translates to a string like this. And you just have to determine if this string has valid parentheses or not. If you try to approach this problem in a brute force way, how would you go about it? You would traverse this string and then you will try to solve this innermost bracket first. So what I'm doing is I'm traversing this string and I get all of these opening brackets, right? Next, if you move ahead, you see a closing bracket over here, right? And now you go back and check, hey, where did I find the opening bracket? You found it over here. So you know that, okay, this is the portion that I have to solve. 
So for a brute force approach, you will start to move from the front until you get a closing bracket. As soon as you get a closing bracket, you move backward and try to find an opening bracket. You found this pair, right? So you will remove it from your string. And now your problem becomes this. You got rid of one set of brackets. Once again, you will do the same approach, right? You will start to look ahead and then you will find a closing bracket once again. You go back to see, hey, where is my opening bracket? You found this and then once again, you will eliminate this set of brackets. So now you get this string. You will keep on doing this ahead and ultimately if all brackets are gone, yes, this string was valid. Otherwise, you will have one or the other dangling brackets and that is how you can say that, hey, this string is not valid. So this is a brute force approach and it will work every time. But you will end up taking a lot of time just to analyze your string again and again, correct? So definitely it can be done in a better way. If you try to notice, when you are traversing your string and as soon as you find a closing bracket, what do you look for? You look for the opening bracket, right? So you will look for the most recent bracket that you had encountered. And that gives you a hint. What does that mean? It means the last character you just encountered. That is last in, first out. And it gives you the hint of a stack data structure. If you're new to stack data structures, I would highly recommend you to pause this video and look at my introductory video on stacks first. But if you're aware with them, let us move ahead and take advantage of the stack data structure to come up with a very efficient solution. Okay, so now I have a stack data structure and I have the same string with me. You have to determine if this string has valid parentheses or not. One way to approach this problem will be that you start traversing this string from the beginning. And what is the first character that you get? You get an opening bracket, right? So if your string has to be valid and if you get a opening square bracket, then definitely you will want a closing square bracket as well, correct? So what you do is, as soon as you get an opening square bracket, just add a closing square bracket to your stack. And now move ahead. Now you get an opening curly bracket. And if your string has to be valid, then there should be one closing curly bracket as well, correct? So I will add a closing curly bracket to my stack as well. Just wait for it a little while and all of it will make sense to you. Now move ahead. What do you see? You see a normal opening bracket over here, right? And for your string to be valid, you should have a closing normal bracket also, right? And if you notice, what are we doing over here? We got all of these brackets in this order, right? And in our stack, I am storing this order. I am preserving this order. So what happens next? I see a closing bracket this time. As soon as you see a closing bracket, you need to search, hey, do I have opening brackets for it? Now look in your stack. If you pop an element, what do you find? You find a closing bracket. That means there was one opening bracket as well, right? So it simply means that this set has been taken care of. So what I will do is I will just remove this element from my stack. And now just move ahead once again. You see a opening square bracket. An opening square bracket means there has to be a closing square bracket also. So just add it to the stack. So basically, if you're getting any opening bracket, just add its reverse closing bracket to the stack. And now you have a closing bracket. As soon as you see a closing bracket, just look at the top element in your stack. The top element is the same. It means that, hey, I was able to find a pair. So once again, just remove this. Now move ahead. What is the next element? It is a closing curly bracket. Look in your stack. You have your closing curly bracket over here. So just remove this element once again. So far, so good. What happens now? You get a opening normal bracket. So add a closing normal bracket to your stack. Move ahead, you get a normal closing bracket. So look in your stack. It is the same. So just pop this element and you can move ahead. You get the last element and that is a closing bracket. And if you look in your stack, you have the closing square bracket as well. They both are same. So you simply remove it from the stack. If you notice, you have traversed the entire string and your stack is also empty. That means all of the brackets were taken care of. So if this condition is true, if you reach the end of the string, 
and your stack is empty, you return a true. So if you notice, in just one scan of the string, you were able to determine if you have valid parentheses or not. Similarly, let us look at one example where the parentheses are not valid. What will happen then? You have an opening bracket. So I will add a closing bracket in here, correct? The next one is an opening curly braces. So I add a closing curly braces. The next is a normal parentheses. So I add a closing parentheses. Move ahead now. You see a closing parentheses over here and on your stack also, you have a closing parentheses. So well and good. You remove this. Now move ahead. You get an opening square bracket. So you add an equivalent closing bracket over here. Move ahead now. You see a closing curly bracket. But if you check your stack, you have a closing square bracket. And these two are not the same. That simply tells you that one of the brackets did not close properly or one of the brackets did not open properly. So as soon as these two elements do not match, simply stop over there. You can say that this string is invalid and return false as your answer. Now, based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function is valid. So beginning off with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a character stack and this will store all of my parentheses. Moving ahead, what do we do now? We start a for loop that will iterate over each of these characters in my given string. And what do we do over here? We check each of these characters. So if I get any of the opening parentheses, then I will add its equivalent closing parentheses to my stack. So if I have a square bracket, then I will add the closing square bracket to my stack. If I have an opening curly brace, then I will add the closing curly brace to my stack. So for the first three elements, I will add their equivalent closing brackets to my stack. Now look at the next step. What happens if you get any other character than the opening bracket? So let us say I get a character that is a closing bracket, right? It won't match any of these conditions. So what do we do? We try to pop from the stack and on popping, if I find the same element, then well and good, just pop the stack and continue on. Otherwise, you can simply return a false. So for this particular scenario, as soon as you pop, they both are same. So the stack gets popped out and your loop will run once again. Once again, you encounter this opening bracket. So you will add a equivalent closing bracket over here. So this loop will go on and at any instant, if the closing bracket does not match the top of the stack, then you will simply return a false or at any moment, if your stack is not empty at the very end, then also you can simply return a false because it means one or the other parentheses did not either open or close correctly. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you only do one iteration to traverse through your entire array. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need that extra space to store all of the elements in your stack. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this problem has a lot of different applications. For example, right now you just have to determine if this set of parentheses are valid. Then there can be an extension that you have inserted all the variables and some operators as well. Then how do you determine if it is a valid string? Going forward, someone can ask you, okay, what is the maximum depth of the nesting of the parentheses that you can find? Similarly, you can also be asked that, okay, what is the minimum number of parentheses that you have to remove to make this a valid parentheses string? So all of these problems are related and they all take the help of the stack data structure. So let me know what all such problems you come across. Also, let me know what problems have you found while going throughout this video. Tell me everything in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone else also who is watching the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going. Also, I want to give you a quick update as I will be releasing my playlist on all the introductory concepts of graphs. 
So stay tuned until next time.